not suppress the voices of Palestinian Americans and for those of us who and of those of us who stand in strong solidarity with Palestinian human rights. I'm waiting for the call. As soon as I get the call saying that they'll allow a Palestinian American speaker from this stage, which I think would be very reasonable, then I want to go home. Until then, we'll be right here. My phone is charged. I'm waiting for the call. You just heard from Abbas Alloway, who is one of the co-founders of the Uncommitted Movement. And last night, just before Tim Walls took the stage at the DNC, Abbas received word that their request for a Palestinian-American speaker was denied. Now, one of the speakers in contention was Rua Roman, who is a Palestinian-American state representative from Georgia, a really important swing state. And she gave us a glimpse of what her speech would have been had they invited her to speak. She writes on Twitter, my speech urged us to unite behind Harris, criticized Trump, and spoke about the promise of this moment. Now her speech has been published online in full. I'll link to that down below. I don't want to share it right now because in the event she does get to speak, I'm still a little bit hopeful, then I don't want to spoil it for you. But her speech is powerful. She says nothing objectionable whatsoever. She doesn't criticize Democrats. She explicitly endorses Harris. And on top of that, she criticizes Donald Trump, as she said, and she calls for unity between everyone, including Jews and Arabs. Her speech is the perfect thing for this moment. This is somebody the DNC should be begging to have speak at that convention. But they denied her. Now, they've given speaking spots to a Border Patrol agent, the former CEO of American Express, multiple Republicans, including former Trump administration officials and anti-choice Republicans, and perverts like Bill Clinton. But not a single Palestinian American was given a speaking spot. I guess the Democratic Party doesn't want to humanize the people whose families they're bombing. But I mean, regardless, Abbas made it clear that he wasn't willing to accept this as the final decision. And a sit-in quickly started to form in front of the United Center, and their frustration, I've got to say, was palpable. Good evening, everybody. My name is Rua Roman. I am a Georgia state representative. I'm an elected Democrat. I come from the swing state of Georgia. We are not here to create any divisions. As my colleagues have said over and over and over again, the only reason we are here, the only reason we are here is to ensure that Donald Trump will never make it to the White House and save the lives of the people that we love. It's about the fact that today I watched my party say our tent can fit anti-choice Republicans, but it can't fit an elected official like me. I do not understand. I do not understand why being a Palestinian has become disqualifying in this country. I don't know how much more we have to prove. All of us have decade or more long resumes working for this party because we know that this party is the only one that's ever tried to meet the promise of our country. We are here to literally save the soul of our party. I do not understand why that is a bad thing. This would have truly and sincerely been a beautiful gesture to show. This party cares about the cries of an Israeli child the same way they care about the cries of a Palestinian child. We are not asking for too much. All we wanted was to be on that stage. I have been mobilizing voters in Georgia for 10 years. We helped build the electorate that delivered Georgia. There's 76,000 registered Muslim voters in the state. There are 55,000 Arabs that live in the state. Are you really going to tell me that it doesn't matter? Are you really going to tell me that we can deliver a win come November without them? That's not even including all the people who love us. That doesn't include all the people who care enough that went out and said, you know what, I am standing in solidarity with you. I should feel like a human being. I should be not feeling like I'm a second tier citizen here in this country. And just for advocating for my people to feel like it's okay to harass me. It's okay to feel, I mean, this is not just my struggle. There's a lot of us that are facing this backlash. But you know what? I stay resilient as a Palestinian person because I know that in Gaza, they are facing a genocide and I should keep being resilient and pushing forward because I am lucky. I am lucky to be here instead of 
in a refugee camp. I am lucky to be here instead of in Gaza. How are we supposed to celebrate and be joyful when the party they support is telling them that they're not welcome? It's incredibly demoralizing. It's the fact that they deny them is maddening to me. Now, the sit-in quickly garnered a lot of attention and got a response from the Harris campaign. Slate journalist Alex Salmon reports, uncommitted leader Abbas Alaway says they've received new word from the Harris camp, this was late last night, which is aware of the sit-down demonstration. Harris campaign's message, a speaker is not happening. Would something else work? Would you be open to a private meeting? This is unacceptable. A speaking spot is one small thing that they are asking for. It's a symbolic gesture to Palestinian Americans to let them know that they're welcome in this party. Even if they're not getting explicit policy promises like an arms embargo, which is the most reasonable request ever, a speaking spot at least gives them the chance to feel seen. It's the bare minimum. But here's the thing. They weren't taking no for an answer. They stood there all night until the sun came up and they were still waiting for a call from the Harris campaign that they never got. But as they stood strong, something really powerful started to happen that was genuinely encouraging to see. The support for these folks started to pour in. Congresswoman Ilhan Omar showed up to stand in solidarity with them and console them. Then Summer Lee showed up. Then they received calls from Congresswoman AOC, then Rashida Tlaib. The next day, Congresswoman Delia Ramirez showed up, then Cori Bush, then Congressman Maxwell Frost and Keith Ellison called on the DNC publicly to let them speak, as did Greg Kasar. Now, on top of that, the dam burst. The United Auto Workers Union publicly called for them to let a Palestinian American speak, and even major celebrities like Mark Ruffalo echoed that same call. And in one of the most touching moments I've seen yet, Israeli American Elena Zajcik, who's a family member of one of the hostages, joined that same call, writing on Twitter, quote, Rachel and John deserved every second on that stage. I also believe a Palestinian American voice deserves to be heard on that stage. I'd love to hear from Rua Roman, and I hope the DNC will give her the chance to be heard. This is what true solidarity looks like, and I'm so touched to see so many people stand up for their right to speak. But here's the thing. At the time that I record this video, they still haven't gotten the call, if you can believe that. Now, if that happens, I'll update you in the pinned comment down below. I'm still, again, a little bit hopeful. But Harris needs to do the right thing. It's not even a question. Give them a call yourself, Harris, and let them know that they will allow Rua to speak. That is not a big ask. And not letting her speak would be a grave mistake. And I say this because last night, the group Muslim Women for Harris Waltz announced that it was disbanding over this decision, writing on Instagram, quote, we cannot in good conscience continue Muslim Women for Harris Waltz in light of this new information from the uncommitted movement that VP Harris's team declined their request to have a Palestinian American speaker take the stage at the DNC. The family of the Israeli hostage that was on the stage tonight has shown more empathy towards Palestinian Americans and Palestinians than our candidate or the DNC has. This is a terrible message to send to Democrats. Palestinians have the right to speak about Palestine. We pray that the DNC and VP Harris's team makes the right decision before the convention is over for the sake of each of us. Yeah, what are we doing here? This is a no-brainer. And the good news is that Harris still has time to do the right thing. Listen, she's actually listened to constructive criticism before, which is encouraging. So now is the time to prove that she's as empathetic as every speaker told us she is and make the call. Now, to be clear, this isn't some last minute thing. The request for a Palestinian speaker was submitted ahead of the convention, and they were only given a denial on Wednesday near the end of the third night. But the lack of an answer didn't bode well for a lot of people, one of them being ta Coates, who wrote an op-ed for Variety asking if there's a Palestinian-American's place under the Democratic Party's Big Ten. Now, he wrote this after the first day of the convention, and it was published on Wednesday. But I want to share something that he wrote that really stuck with me. Quote, Israel and its defenders often claim that it is the only democracy in the Middle East. But what I saw was an ethnocracy where half the people are first class citizens and the other half are something less. And this is a system sponsored and endorsed by the United States of America. The endorsement is not contradictory. For most of its history, America, too, was an ethnocracy in democratic clothing. The ostensible triumph over that old system, which we call Jim Crow, is one of the most uplifting stories America tells itself, one that has been 
been repeatedly invoked at the DNC. How odd I find it that a people presently brutalized by a similar system whose relatives are being erased by that system's wanton violence are also being erased from the stage. As Mark Twain put it, history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes. Connor Thompson shared these photos comparing the 1964 DNC with the 2024 DNC with an explanation from Dan Berger, who explains 60 years after the Democratic Party refused to seat the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party at its convention, the Democratic Party refused to even hear a vetted speech from a Palestinian at its convention. In both cases, party leaders are complicit with brutal violence. Exactly. And on that note, all this talk of a ceasefire is nothing more than a transparent attempt to placate the people in the Democratic Party who just want the slaughter in Gaza to stop because as Ilhan Omar put it if you really wanted a ceasefire you just stop sending the weapons it is that simple yep so Biden's claim that he's fighting for a ceasefire rings hollow because his actions indicate that he doesn't actually support a ceasefire. We'll know that he's actually serious about getting a ceasefire when he cuts off the weapons to Israel. Until then, spare me this bullshit about him supporting a ceasefire or fighting for a ceasefire because it's just not true. But as for Harris, she doesn't have to do the same thing that Biden is doing. Palestinian and Arab Americans have given her more than enough grace. And now it's time for her to step up and prove to us that she's the leader that she wants us to think that she is. Make the call, Harris.